Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, A.J. Hogue, where A.J.'s more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's A.J. with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. Hi, I'm A.J. Hogue, the author of Effortless English, Learn to Speak English Like a Native. I'm the father of the Effortless English Club and System. It trains you to speak English fluently, speak English confidently, speak English effortlessly, think in English. When you train, join my VIP program, commit, 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 don't quit at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. EffortlessEnglishClub.com. That's where you join. That's where you commit to my VIP program. Talk to other VIP members. They'll tell you about their own success. They all committed. They didn't quit. They kept going. And that's why they succeeded. That's why they speak English so powerfully, so well now. And they write it well, too. You can even see this on social media. So be like them. Commit to my VIP program today at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Go there. Commit. EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Welcome everyone live as usual. Live on Facebook today. All right. People saying hello as usual from all the various parts of the world. From Brazil and South America over to the Dominican Republic, up to the Dominican Republic. Around the world to Vietnam, Puerto Rico, Egypt and Uzbekistan. You get the idea. Everywhere, basically. Everywhere around the world. Everywhere around the world we have effortless English fans. Effort, effort, eh. <laughs> See? <laughs> Even I have problems speaking sometimes. Effortless English fans. Effortless English supporters. Effortless English members. We have all different parts of the world. All different countries around the world. Except Antarctica. I think no one in Antarctica that I know. <laughs> but definitely Asia, Africa, Europe, North and South America. You get the idea. Afghanistan, Bangkok, Thailand, Syria, Iraq. Lots and lots and lots of people. Okay, let's talk about our topic. Poland, hey America again. Saudi Arabia, Tajikistan. See, Korea. Thailand, Myanmar. All right, Bulgaria. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, let's talk more. Yesterday, we uh, talked about the uh, mind control. This is, I'm kind of uh, preparing you, preparing myself for Brave New World, our next book. We have a few more weeks, okay? We have a few more weeks. We're going to focus on worry and how to stop worrying and start living. You know, the topic our current book, but, you know, the current book, the book we're doing now, Dale Carnegie's book, is, um, it's, it's simple, I would say. It's a good book. It's useful. It's practical. Good stuff in there for life to just live a happier life. Don't worry so much. Be less afraid. Very useful. That's why we're doing this book. However, um, I would say it's not deep, not so deep. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a very direct book, and the ideas are very simple. The writing style is simple, and that's good. That's not a bad thing. I'm not criticizing. It's a compliment, really. Carnegie's writing and his advice and his techniques are very, very simple and easy and practical. Easy to understand, right? I mean, each chapter, this book, every technique, they're all very simple and easy to understand, right? I think, you know, for me, it, everything's very obvious, right? So for me, it's also very easy to explain this book that we're doing now. But our next book, Brave New World, is quite different. It's um, very, very deep. It's not simple at all. Uh, the topic is complicated. You know, this methods of mind control is really what it's about. Power, mind control, propaganda techniques. Um very important very 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 important that's why we're going to read this book 
super important. Everyone should study this, this topic, not only Brave New World, but this general topic of mind control, propaganda, deception, lies, persuasion. Every modern person living now, especially kids, they must, must, must learn this. This is how we're controlled. All of us, every one of us. Don't be proud and think you're special and no, not you. You, you They can't control you. They can't uh, trick you. They can't uh, lie to you. You, No, 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 no. All of us, all of us from, from the youngest age. So this is why we've got to learn all of this. Very important. That's why we did Animal Farm. That's why we're doing Brave New World. And I'll probably continue to do books like this. Not always. It's it, the, the topic is too serious and heavy, right? You can feel it when we talk about this topic. It's heavy. We're talking about evil, really. We're talking about evil and how evil people control us. So is that important? Very important. Very important topic. But also, it's, it's a little heavy, <laughs> right? It feels heavy. It's so serious. So in between, sometimes we need to take a break from that and focus on things that are more light, more simple, uh, more fun, more enjoyable, right? Because life is not only evil. Life is not all bad, right? There are There's not all suffering. There's the other side too. So we don't want to be too much on this side of learning about evil and mind control and propaganda and how they use language. We must learn this, but we also must learn the other sides of life, of love and enjoying and, and all of those things too. So I want to keep a balance in our book club with this. Very important. And in my show too. But right now, because I know this book is going to be difficult, I know it's a, it's a, it's a serious book, it's a difficult book, the writing and also the style, the vocabulary will be more difficult, much more difficult in Brave New World. So because of all of this, I feel we need, and I also need, um, kind of a long introduction to the book. That we need to start talking about some of these ideas right now. So we're kind of prepared, we're ready. So when we read Brave New World, when we read it, we'll see the messages. If you don't think about it before, it's easy you can read it as just a story. Oh, it's just a story and it's kind of strange story. Science, it's just science fiction. But that's not what it is. Not at all. So we must kind of understand these basic ideas and techniques first. Then we will read the book and you will see it. You will see it in the story then. You'll understand. So you'll, it'll be a stronger book for you a deeper and more powerful book. So that's why I'm kind of talking about these topics. Probably tomorrow or next show, I'm not going to talk about this because it is very heavy. But today I will talk about it again. And today I want to talk about a very, very serious topic. Um, it's a heavy topic. <laughs> um, but the nature of evil. What is evil? What is evil? We use this word evil. And uh, in movies... Sometimes in movies, some good movies, uh, or at least good parts of movies, will show us the truth about evil. How does evil think? How does it attack us? Oh, the old books and the old religious books definitely teach us the truth. But um, sometimes in movies, they do not teach us the truth. We get a wrong idea. Because uh, it's, it's like a cartoon, too much in the movies. I'll give you an example, the Avengers movies. I'm not criticizing the movies for entertainment, but just in terms of evil, like the, the villains, the bad guys in those movies, the, the Marvel movies, the superhero movies, the, the evil guys like Thanos. It's totally wrong. It's not, it's not true evil. That's not how evil people act. It's not how they think at all. It's, it gives a very wrong view of evil because how... Why is Thanos in the movies? If you've seen this movie, right? This guy, he's this big, strong guy. His name is Thanos, this purple, super strong guy. He gets all this power just so he can kill half of everybody in the world. Why? It's not logical. There's, It's no logic at all. 
That's not how evil people think. It's not random like that. It's it's ridiculous. It's stupid. And and in my opinion, he's not a good villain. It's he's a stupid villain. He's he's it's not a, not even close to what real evil is like. And and really honestly, I think that's my main one of my main criticisms of all of those Marvel superhero movies. The villains are always like that. They just like, ah, I'm a bad guy. And they just do bad stuff for no reason at all. Why? I don't know. You know, just to be scary and tough. It's, it's, you know, it's just, it's not, it gives us the very wrong view. That's not what evil is like at all. Evil has, I mean, this is a deep topic, but how does evil attack us? How do evil people, right? The people who are at the top, who are, they're not good people. And just even just regular people, if they're bad people, they're kind of evil and they want to hurt us. How do they do it, really? They don't get magic stones and snap their finger and kill everybody. No, 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 no. How do they really do it? What do they do? There's two things, and you will see this, in, again, in, all, in the old, old books, the old teachings. You'll see it. Number one, the corruption. This is their favorite technique. The favorite technique of evil, evil people, is corruption. What does this mean? It means they, they corrupt the good, they corrupt the strong, they corrupt the virtuous. Corruption. What does that mean? It means they, they try to make good into the opposite. They see a good person, and then with lies, with many techniques, they try to turn the good person bad to make them weak, to make them bad. And a lot, many times they do this with pleasure. That's what Brave New World is about. They especially do this with strong people. Evil people don't want to have a fight with strong people directly. It's dangerous for them, right? If someone is strong, they're not going to attack them directly because the strong person might hurt them or kill them or they're, they're going to fight back. They don't want to do this. They want to corrupt. They make the beautiful and then they make it ugly. They see beauty and they want to they turn it into ugliness. They've done this with uh, all of our art and our architecture and our music. What used to be beautiful is now ugly. That's evil. They do it with all different areas. We'll talk about more areas, how they do this. The second thing that evil does is they attack the gentle and the weak. They don't attack the strong. They try to corrupt the strong. But with the weak, they bully the weak. They bully gentle people. The, the weak and the gentle, they attack them directly. They bully them directly. That's why they like to attack and control children. Because children are gentle and weak. They can't fight back. But even adults who are more gentle and weak, evil will attack them and bully them. We'll talk about that another day. But I want to focus on number one, corruption. Today, corruption. What does this mean, corruption? When uh, evil attacks using corruption to corrupt the good. What it means is that in many ways, evil wants you to choose your own destruction. They don't... They don't force you to do it. You choose it yourself. You do it to yourself. Of course, they use lies and many other ways to make you do it, to fool you, to trick you. But its key is that you choose it. And, uh, you know, I want a hat tip. I just watched a podcast, uh, a comedian named Owen Benjamin, and he was talking about this topic. And I really like this. I, I totally agree with him. So I, I've been thinking about this myself also. Uh, so think about it. They want you to choose your own slavery. They want you to choose your fall. They want you to choose your own weakness. They want you to choose your own mind control, that you do it to yourself. They want you to choose your own destruction. How do they do this? They use persuasion. They use lies. They use temptation, which means pleasure. 
They try to show you, look at this, it will feel so good, it will be so great. So then you choose, but they don't force you to do it. You're not forced to do it, but you choose to do it. And again, yesterday I was mentioning the religious examples, right? There's a the story of Adam and Eve and the snake. Eve chooses to eat the apple. The snake does not force her to do it. Of course, the, the snake is, you know, the devil, Satan. He doesn't force her to do it. He doesn't have a gun and says, you must eat this apple or I'll kill you. No, 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 no. He uses lies and tricks and lang beautiful language. Tell, look at that apple. Ooh, yeah. Come on. Just eat it, you know? And and she chooses her own destruction, really. Her own fall. She chooses it herself. And then her husband also later makes the same mistake. But they choose it, right? This is what evil does. This is corruption. They were good, they were innocent. And then the evil influence, the snake changes them you know with lies and mind control until they choose to do evil they choose their own fall they choose their own defeat themselves that's what corruption is and then i gave you know the other religious examples buddha meditating he almost is he's this close to enlightenment final step and what does maya do maya is very similar like to satan same, similar idea. What does Maya do? Again, tries, of course, this time fails, but tries to get the Buddha to, again, to make that bad choice. He, he doesn't force him. He can't force him. But he tries to trick him with lies, with persuasion, showing beautiful women, showing power, showing money, just wants him, wants to corrupt him. And, of course, the Buddha refuses. And it's the same story, again, the same exact technique Satan uses against Jesus in the desert. Same idea. Look at this power you can have, right? But again, wants him to choose it. Doesn't kill Jesus himself. Doesn't f try to force him to do it. No, 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 no. Has to tries to corrupt him and again fails. So they use persuasion, they use lies, they use mind control. Well, this is exactly what humans do in, uh, you know, in our modern world. Using schools, using the media, many other techniques. This is what the very, very top and the powerful do to control us. They also want us to choose our own slavery. They want us to make these choices. Not usually, right? Does someone come to your house and with a gun and tell you you must watch TV? No. You choose to do it. I'll give you some examples from our own life. Pornography. Pornography. Now, many people complain about pornography, and you should. It's, it's terrible. Um, and they talk about, you know, these people who are pushing it, pushing it on the internet, everywhere, trying to push it, push it, push it. But in the end, you choose to watch it, right? No one actually forces you to watch it. And I, I'm not, I don't mean you, but I mean anyone, right? No one is forced to watch it. Yes, they are tempted. Yes, they put it in front, and it's a human weakness. But finally, people who start watching porn all the time, they are choosing it, and they destroy themselves. Similar to drugs, right? You know, the story of drugs. Most people, how do they start using drugs? Someone else... Hey, try this, man. It feels great. This is good. Come on, be cool. And they try to use pressure and persuasion and lies and social pressure. Come on, just do the drug. Come on, come on. But finally, no one forces them to do it. They choose to do the drug. They choose it themselves. And then they choose it again and again. They become addicted and finally destroy themselves. They are corrupted. Yes, the person who corrupts them is evil. But there is the important step that there is that choice. Entertainment is a big one. We are guilty. I'm guilty. You're guilty. We are all guilty of this one. And that is, they offer these funny shows, these amazing graphics, these 
exciting stories, entertainment, distraction, emotional pleasure. But we choose to watch. We choose to watch the TV shows. We choose to watch the movies. And then also in those movies, we know now, maybe when you were young, you didn't know, maybe before you didn't know, but you know now there's lots of terrible messages in there. Terrible messages in there. They're putting in there. We know, but still often we still choose to watch it. We're choosing our own harm, our own fall, our own mental slavery. We're choosing to watch their propaganda. Many people still watch the fake news. They know that they lie all the time, but they still watch it anyway. They still read the newspapers anyway, even though they know they're lying. Choosing their own destruction. That's corruption, corruption. And then finally, the big one, the title of today's show, usury. What is usury? Usury means debt with interest. That's when you become a slave. This is financial slavery. This is a big technique to control people, take away freedom, make you an economic slave, debt. They use this with individual people, and they use this with whole countries, whole nations, both. It's used both, and it's the same purpose. But again, especially individually, we choose it. You don't have to get a loan. You don't have to. You don't have to get that debt unless you're dying and you need a loan to save your life or for medical treatment. Okay, that I understand. But most of us, that's not the situation. Most of us, what? They offer, right? These usurers, it's the money lenders, the money loaners. They offer us Lots of, oh, free money, easy money. Not free, <laughs> but easy money. Credit cards, they send us the applications all the time, constantly. Oh, sign up for the credit card. Look, easy money, 2000 limit, $3,000 limit. Here, here, easy money, easy money. Buy anything you want, easy money. The banks, oh, get a loan. You can buy a house, you can buy a car. Here, easy money, easy money. Right, they're tempting us, corruption. And But finally, we don't have to do it. You don't have to do it. You don't have to get a credit card. You don't have to get a bank loan. I don't have to. You don't have to. We choose. We choose badly. And yes, they deceive us sometimes and they lie to us sometimes. And uh, also a lot of social pressure around us. Everybody else is doing it. It seems normal. So then we do it. And then we become more slaves, more financial more enslaved. But really, you enslave yourself. Are they evil? Yes. Are they lying? Yes. Are they pressuring? Yes. But finally, finally, they make us do it ourselves because finally we choose. We accept it. They don't force us to take that loan. Now, sometimes with countries they do, but with individuals like you and me, they don't. And then we're trapped and controlled. We have limited choices. Not total slaves like in you know the old days, but partial slaves. Now you have to work. You must work more now because you have to pay this loan. And not just, the, not just what you borrowed, but of course the interest, the extra. And that's what kills you. And that's what makes you really a prisoner is that usury, the interest. I'll tell you from my own life, I'm not criticizing you because I did it myself when I was young. Okay, so I did this myself. I was young, not making much money. You know, poor, really. I was poor. And uh, I, you know, very poor, in fact. But I was used to living in like, you know, not rich, but in a, you know, decent, like a fairly nice apartment. And, uh, you know, I had a car. I wanted to, wanted to ha keep my car. So after I graduated, though, I was making very, very, very little money. But I continued to live the same way. I continued to live the same way, like, like when I was at home with my parents, like when I was at college and my parents were giving me money. I continued the same lifestyle after graduation, but I did not have the same money. Well, of course, I started to have problems. I didn't have enough money. So what did I do? Oh, the credit cards. They offer the temptation. 
And so I, oh, oh, okay. And I, oh, okay, I'll just get one credit card. This will help. I had, you know, so I got the credit card. And then I started using the credit card. I used the credit card for, to repair my car. Oh, that's good. I need to do that. But then I would use it sometimes to, I'd eat at a restaurant. More debt. And then I would use it, you know, to buy books. Well, I'm using it to buy books. This is for my learning, so that's okay. You know, I have excuses, but I was being corrupted, right? I was choosing my own financial slavery. Well, this continued, continued, and the, it goes up and up and up. And as you might know, with credit cards especially, the interest kills you, the usury. The interest destroys you. Because soon it was too big. My, my income, my job was... The payment was very low. So I was only paying the interest, only paying the interest, only paying the interest, which means each month the, the debt, how much I owed, it never changed. I'm working, working, working to pay this usury, this interest, and it never goes anywhere. It just stays the same always. I'm now working for the credit card company, at least partly. I was. This is what the, the, in English we say rat race. Rat race, it's slang. The rat race. That's what it is. It means a slave to debt, a slave to working, going nowhere. The, uh, the idiom, the slang, comes from like a pet rat. Some people have pet rats, <laughs> you know. <coughs> Excuse me. You know, with the pet rat, they have that little wheel. And they run on the wheel in the cage. They're in the cage, right? They're inside. And for exercise, they, you put a little wheel and it spins. And the, the rat runs. <laughs> Hamsters and gerbils do the same, right? And it runs and it runs and it runs. But going nowhere, right? It can run, run, run. Fast, fast, fast. A lot of effort. A lot of energy. A lot of action. But n always stays in the same spot. The same place. This is what it means, rat race. So see, this is what I was doing financially with money. So now I'm in debt. I owe this money. So I'm working, 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 paying credit card each month. But the balance, right, the debt never changes, never going anywhere. Rat race. I was in the rat race, a slave. Now, finally, I got out, but uh, some people never get out. Or some people are financial slaves for many, 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 many years, for a very, very long time. And again, of course, they do this to whole countries, too. They, they, you know, Argentina is a famous one. But, I mean, you can look, go all around the world. They've done this. Still doing it. America is in massive debt. Uh, every country in the world, I believe, is in debt now. Who owns the debt? Who owns? Who's giving the money? Hmm. They are the masters. But you can see, and why do we do this? Why do we enslave ourselves? For different reasons. So, uh, sometimes it's greed, right? We, we, we take the debt because of greed. We just want more. I want a new car. But you can't afford it, right? We want to buy things which really we do not have enough money. We really cannot afford this. We cannot really afford that house. We cannot really afford that car. We cannot really afford that phone or whatever it is or apartment. But we like it. We want it. We think we deserve it. So we get the credit card. We get the house payment. We get the loan. It's basically greed. We have to be honest. It's greed. Um, impatience is another one. Not impatience. It's the opposite of patience. So we're not patient. We want something. We don't want to wait. I don't have enough money now for this. I don't want to wait and save for, you know, weeks or months or years. I want it now. I want it now. I want it now. Right? And advertising and everything, tr trying to make us impatient. Don't wait. Don't wait. Get it now. Get it now. Get it now. So we get the loan. We get the credit card. And then finally, a big one. This is a very big one. Social criticism. We're afraid of other people's opinions. Everybody around us says, yeah, get the loan, buy a house, get a loan. Just get a credit card. You need a car. 
So get a loan. Don't get an old car. It might break. Get the new car, the loan. It's okay. You, you have a good job. It's okay. So there's a lot of social pressure. And there's a social pressure, you know, oh, I, I need a car that's good enough. Like I can't get the super ugly, super cheap car. Everyone, all my friends, all my family, they have nice cars. I can't get a car for $500 that's ugly. Or I can't live in a one-room apartment that's in a cheap part of town. No, 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 I can't do that. I mean, that was my problem as a student after I graduated university. Oh, I was used to all my life living my parents' lifestyle, right? Yeah, well, they were middle class. They were middle age and middle class. They had careers. My dad had a long career and job. Of course, he could live like, like that, <laughs> but... I was not the same and I couldn't I couldn't adjust. It took me time to realize I can't live like this anymore. I'm not my dad. My dad earned that. I didn't. So I have to change completely my thinking. I have to live very, 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 very simply and cheaply. So here's the point. There's no gun. No gun that's making us do this. There's no chains. They're not forcing us to do this. They are corrupting us. You accept this freely. I accepted it freely. Yes, they pers... Oh, it's okay, little baby. Oh, yeah, I know. It is terrible. Yeah. I know. I agree. Yes, I agree. Oh, you don't want to be in debt. That's terrible. All right. I'm holding a baby while I'm talking to you. Um... You okay? <laughs> yeah, so my baby agrees. It's terrible. So we do it to ourselves, ultimately, finally. Are they evil? Of course they are. Are they using a lot of techniques on us to control our minds? Definitely. Advertising, TV, movies, school, it's everywhere. But finally, most of us, finally, 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 for most of us, the final choice Still, we have it. We still have the final power. We can still say no. That's why we're doing this book. This is the good news of Brave New World. It's the good news of these books. It's why I'm teaching these techniques. When you see the techniques, when you see what's happening, then you can make a better choice because you still can choose. You can say no, no, no usury, no debt for me. I'm not going to do it. I don't care. I live in a cheap house. I'll live in a cheap house. I'll have a bad car. I'll have no car. I'll walk. I'll take the bus. Right? And the same thing with, um, tur turn off the TV. I'm not watching these movies anymore. I'm not watching these TV shows anymore. I'm not watching this garbage anymore. So we still have the choice. That means we do have the power still because we do have this freedom in our soul, in our spirit. We can do it. You want to take her? Okay, baby child, mama's going to take you. Bye-bye. Mama, thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> All right. Mama's taking the baby. Mommy's taking the baby. So this is the power, the good thing, but you need to understand it because um, corruption is their power, right? Lies, deceptions. Uh, again, right, it's... it's that's why I think, you know, the, the, the Bible, the, the sutras, the Gita, the, all these books, the Quran, all of it, it shows, it shows us really how evil works, right? It's that evil is not a big monster usually. Ah, and hit us with a rock. No, 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 evil's pretty and clever and a perfect, powerful liar really good at tempting us. Evil shows us, look at this pleasure. You can have this, and you can have this, and look at these wonderful things you can have. Just say yes. Just say yes. Evil is charming. That comedian Owen Benjamin, he was talking about a Rolling Stones song also. The Rolling Stones have a famous song about the devil. Um, sympathy for the devil is the name of the song. Well, in the beginning of the song, it says, Please allow me to introduce myself. I'm a man of wealth and taste. It's 
describing evil. Not ugly. Let me introduce myself. He doesn't say, I'm, a, I'm an ugly monster man. I'm ugly and terrible. He says, I'm a man of wealth and taste. This taste means like elegance, beautiful, charm. This is the devil speaking in the song. The devil's describing himself. He's wealthy. He's got money. He's got power. He looks good. He's charming. And then he tempts us with lies. Maya. Or, and, you know, this is also a psychological truth. It's also just a human truth. It's the same thing. That, and we're going to see this in Brave New World. Because in Brave New World, it's very much about that. How they use pleasure to control you. Pleasure. Temptation. And the terrible, terrible power of that. And how they finally get most people, to choose their own slavery, choose their own ignorance, choose their own destruction, choose their own pain, choose their own failure, choose their own weakness, choose their own depression. Just like a drug addict. All right. Heavy topic. <laughs> We'll do something light next time, I promise. I'll think of a light and happy topic next time. But, you know, this stuff's important. If you don't know this, then you're, you're more powerless against it, right? It's easier for them to control you. It's easier for you to make bad choices. When I was young, I didn't realize this stuff. I didn't realize I made a lot of stupid decisions. I just didn't realize what was happening to me, how I was being fooled. And now I do. I want to share it with you because I don't want you to make the same mistake. Or if you did, it's fine, but just make a different choice now. Okay, let's see. All right. Going to the comments and questions now. Live comments and questions. Cezanne says, they use pleasure to control us. Yes, yes, and yes. <clears throat> and I think this is one reason why in, in Hollywood, because Hollywood's all propaganda. <clears throat> they like to show evil always as, as like a monster or totally crazy, uh, constantly violent. I mean, does that exist? Of course, that is, it does exist. There are people like that, but it's less common now. It's this pleasure, the tricks, the deception is really the, it's everywhere. Merrick with a very interesting comment. There are many evil people in the world. I think, however, hating evil is really loving good. Right. Good does not fight evil, but tries to heal it. We must remember, whoever sows evil, does evil, collects misfortune, bad, bad results, the law of karma. In other words, you reap what you sow. Exactly. Sooner or later, it turns around against someone. Yes, indeed, that's right. And so that's why I'm saying that, that really the main thing we need to do is choose good. Say no to that choice. They're going to show it. They're going to put it in our face constantly. We'll learn all the techniques they use to do this. But finally, you still have the power to choose good. You can just say no. Say no. And then you choose good. And that gives you so much power. You don't have to be a big fighter, a soldier. You don't have to kill anybody or, or do any of that. Most of us do not need to do that. Occasionally, maybe if you are attacked violently, you have to fight. But that's not the normal thing. The everyday thing is just saying no to that evil and focusing on the good and the true and the beautiful. You know, virtue, natural law, dharma, all of these things. Loving good. When you love good, you don't want the evil. Yeah, like a good example of this is, I'll give you an ex another example from my life because... Uh, it's an easy example. It's just alcohol. Like um, Becoming an alcoholic. Some people, right? They have this weakness with alcoholic. They choose it. 
they become addicted, it destroys them. For me, it's no problem. I will never be an alcoholic. Why? Because I hate it. I don't like it. I, I, I don't like the taste. So if you don't like the evil, then there's no temptation. I have no temptation about alcohol. You can, you can put me in a bar. You can give me a hundred drinks you, for free. I don't care. I don't want it. I don't like it. Because I just hate it. I, I, the taste is horrible. I know. I just. I don't understand why people drink. Now I know I'm. I'm strange. I know that's not normal. But you see the thing though. I, there's no temptation at all. Alcohol has no power with me. None. Because I don't like it. <laughs> right. <coughs> So, but this is the idea though. You can learn the same thing. When you learn to live simply, to love learning simply, when you, when you have the joy, the happiness of financial freedom, then debt, credit cards, usury, you, there's no temptation. It's easy to say no. You don't even want it. You don't want it. Eh, I don't care about that. I don't need it. I don't want it. I mean, I'm the same now with that. I don't want loans. I wouldn't. I, no debt for me. No loans. I don't. I don't need it. I don't want it. There's no temptation. You can offer me a loan of, you know, a hundred million dollars. I'll give you a hundred million dollars, only two percent interest. I don't want it. I don't care. It has no power now. This is how we do it. So by choosing good, 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 choosing virtue, and and not just choosing, but practicing it and experiencing it, and then finding the happiness that comes long-term from goodness, from virtue, from doing the right thing. Eventually, the evil now, you don't even want it anymore. Mahatma Gandhi wrote about this a lot. Mahatma Gandhi had this exact philosophy. He wrote, wrote about exactly this. The same idea that the, the true victory is no more temptation. You don't even want evil anymore. That there's no temptation at all. Same with like if pornography, if some uh, some guys, young guys, maybe they're ah, oh, oh, pornography, pornography. But eventually, if they focus on real women, real women, and they learn how to deal with real women, and then they finally learn how to have real good relationships and get married and have a family, they don't even want it anymore. No more temptation. The evil has no power anymore. So Merrick is with a very good comment about that because it's right. We, we should learn how evil tries to control us, uh, uh, trick us. But more importantly, we should focus on the good and the true and the beautiful. Ah, Walid with a good question. What can I do if I want to live simply and cheaply, live a simple and cheap life, but I have a family that doesn't want to live Simply and cheap. You're going to have to persuade them. You're going to have to be the leader. You have to become the leader. And you have to show them why it's necessary. If uh, you make... Now, now, I'm not sure if you're talking about family like your wife and children. Or if you're talking about your parents. With your parents, I don't know what you can do. It's a little difficult. With your parents, maybe you need to uh, show them. Just live simply yourself. Show them the benefits. Uh, if you're talking about your own wife and children, well, then you have to be the leader. You know, if you're making the money, you say, hey, I'm making this money. If you're making a lot of the money. So I'm making the decision. <laughs> you, might, you might have to be a little bit of a dictator for a while. Uh, you do it with love and you tell, show them why. And you tell them why long term is going to help them and help you. And you teach them and you're patient and you just you never give up. And eventually it will work. Eventually you can. Stay in the fight. Natan Silverio. Taking a loan is bad. It's a kind of financial slavery. You know, it might be small, a little bit of slavery. It might be a huge slavery, but it's always a bit of slavery because of that interest payment. Because of that interest payment, right? It's not just the loan. It's the 5% or the 10%. Now, if you make a lot of money and it's a small loan, well, it's only a tiny bit of slavery and maybe you finish quickly. But if that's the case, why do you need a loan anyway? Just forget the loan. Just save money, wait a few months, and buy it straight. 
But yeah, it's a form of financial control. It is. That's just the truth. Now, some people can use it. It's a risky. Some people use loans and then they buy assets and they use it for investment and they make money. There's a whole game. Robert Kiyosaki plays that game. You know, the, the author, the writer of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, he, he plays that game with real estate where he gets loans and then he buys houses and then he rents them and then he makes more money. But it's a risky game. It's a dangerous game. Can you make money that way? Yes, you can. But it's dangerous. And I think for most people, normal people like you and me, I think it's best better to avoid that game. That's my opinion. You can disagree. If you are good at business, if you know how to play that game, that game of borrowing money and then make, investing and then making more, if you can do that and make money, you're skilled, you have experience, you know what you're doing, well, you know, go ahead, I guess. That's your choice. Um, some people do make a lot of money that way, but it is dangerous. Some people, a lot of people, lose a lot of money that way. Okay, well, this is a, I don't know if I can give, I'm going to read this comment, but I, I don't have an answer. <laughs> okay. I'll have to think about it. I want to ask you a question. If you want to enter a relationship with a girl to marry her, hmm, first, this is the first time there's a big obstacle from her mother. Ah, mother doesn't like it. Hmm. So, this is a guy, a young man, I guess young man, a man, who wants to marry a girl, but her mother is against it or is resisting. But uh, I feel this time... So, and he's thinking about it a lot. From your experience, what do you see? I stopped learning English. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know enough information, honestly, about it. It's it, There's not enough details. It's complicated. Um, yeah, I just, I, there, I, I can't, I can't, I'm not going to give you advice because it might be bad advice. Um, I'll just basically say that, uh, yeah, and also I've never had this problem. <laughs> My wife's mom is wonderful and likes me. Um, well, okay, let me say this. I will say this. A few, just a, these are just thoughts. This is not advice. Not advice, okay? This is just some ideas in my head after reading that. Uh, number one, family's important and her parents are important and so are your parents. The best situation is everybody likes everybody. This will make your life as a family and your marriage easier and better. Definitely, definitely. So is this a problem? It is a problem. You know, my, uh, my wife, her mom and her dad... They like me a lot, and I like them a lot. And also her sisters, her two sisters. I like them both a lot, and they like me. So very good relationships, everybody, the whole family. It's fantastic. And it's the same my side. My mom and my dad, they love my wife. They think she's fantastic, and my wife likes them. So this creates a very easy family situation on both sides. I can, I'm happy to visit her family all many times so my wife is very happy she gets to see her family a lot it's wonderful and the same we visit america no problem my wife is happy to see my family they love to see her and now we have children so it's all this is all important and so if uh you try to marry someone and their mom hates you or doesn't like you um long term that that is a problem because it's going to create all these problems long term you know, you're not, you'll feel bad about it. Maybe you're not going to want to go visit her family. I don't want to go because your mom doesn't like me. And, it, uh, and her mom will be saying bad stuff about you to, you know, this girl, if she was your wife. And then that might make your wife start thinking negatively and starts to hurt your marriage. It's a bad situation. So the only thing I will say is you have to solve this situation. And there are two choices. You change the mom's mind Th that can happen 
That can happen. It's possible. She might change her mind later. No, get to know you more. Maybe she just wants you to take more time. So that's possible, and that's good. Then she maybe she'll start to like you. Great. Or you might have to find another girl. <laughs> that's my basic thinking, but you know, I don't know. There's not enough details. I can't really give you much advice. I don't want to cause a problem for you. Just good luck to you, and you know, just focus on being a strong person, a good person, having a a life purpose for yourself, getting your own financial independence, having, building your confidence and your skills in life. Focus on that, especially when you're a young man. That is the key thing. And then, you know, the, the relationships with girls will eventually uh, get better. Luisa says... You have a beautiful pronunciation. I understand nearly all that you say. Well, thank you, Eloisa. That's very nice. And good to see you again. I know you're here a lot. Um, well, thanks. And Luisa, with the follow-up, you have the temptation of sugar like most people. Good example. And I am tempted, right? It's everywhere. That's right. We all have our battles, you know. We're all human. I mean, you know, an, a very famous example from history is St. Augustine. He wrote a book called Confessions. And the whole, well, I won't say the whole, but a lot of that book, it's all about his temptations. All these things, especially for him, it was sex. And him fighting it and fighting it and dealing with it and ah, ah. And that's before pornography and the internet, <laughs> okay? So he became a saint, but it wasn't easy. Even the saints fight and struggle. Yeah, Alessandro, with good insight here. Hey, Alessandro, good to see you again. Movies keep get us used to the idea used to thinking that one hero always comes to save us so people don't take action. Right. See, when you start to look at movies and TV a little more deeply, you will start to find these kinds of messages. They're, they're not direct. They, they, they don't say these things directly. It, it would be too obvious. That's, there's, that's not good mind control. The better mind control is they do it in an emotional way. They do it indirectly. Again, we will see this in Brave New World. You'll see it in Brave New World. And so this is an idea in many movies. Wait for the hero. A superhero will come and save the world. Not, not normal, regular people. Not you, not me. No, 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 no. We have to wait for Superman to come and do it. How to resist, Karwan asks Othman. Well, that's a big general question, but... You have to gain control. Well, you know, there's a few things. Number one, as I kind of discussed yesterday, you know, one of the first steps is to, to realize, to see what's happening. Like part of my problem when I was young, I didn't even realize. It was ignorance. You know, Buddha said, you know, the source of much suffering is ignorance. Um, so I just, I didn't know. I was foolish. I was young and foolish. I was making bad decisions. I was corrupted i was influenced to make bad choices because i was foolish so when you when you learn all the techniques when you read brave new world and animal farm and 1984 shadow men when you read books about persuasion and advertising and marketing see this is one reason i can see this stuff because i i have read a lot of that <coughs> Also, hypnosis, NLP, all these things, psychology. Then you start to see it. You start to it become, it, it, it's invisible. Now you can see it. And this is the first step to resist because you start to realize, ah, these ideas, they're not my own. They're being programmed. They're being lied. They're, these are lies. It's temptation. And so this is the first step to resisting. And then you resist little by little. Or you just stop completely. It's just like, it's the same as any addiction. How do you resist alcohol if you're an addict, an alcoholic? How do alcoholics stop drinking? 
Most of them just stop. The f- number, step one, they admit it. They say, I'm an alcoholic. I'm an addict. They, that's the first step. If they, Most of them for a long time, many of them forever for their whole life, they never do step one. They just say, no, no, I'm okay. I'm not addicted to alcohol. I am not an alcoholic. I'm okay. I can control it. I'm okay. Their life is being destroyed. Their health is being destroyed. I'm okay. I'm okay. I can control. I don't have a problem. Believe me, I have worked with them. It, it's frustrating. <laughs> so that's the, the first and probably the biggest step is when they say, I have a problem. I'm an alcoholic. I can't control this. I'm a slave to alcohol. This is destroying my life. They wake up. Red pill. Bah! Well, after that, then there are many solutions, right? They can go get help. They can go to a hospital. They can go to meetings at AA. They can read books. And But most of all, they just quit. (laughs) They One day they say, I will never drink again. And they don't. And sometimes they say, I never will drink again. And then three months later, they have a drink. Oh, and all the bad stuff happens again. And then they fall down and and they, oh, no. But what do they do? They stay in the fight. They wake up again. They say, ah, ah, this is this alcohol strong. This addiction strong, but doesn't matter. I will try again. And they say again, I will never drink again. And then maybe they go six months, no drinking. Uh, And then it happens again. And finally, they quit completely. So that's how they do it. And that's how you do that. That's how you do it with all of these things. All right, a couple more. Azo, okay, and Azo with a good, 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 good comment. Wonderful, very positive. I have to, Azo Gray says, I have to gradually practice what I have just watched from your video tonight. And see, this is another way to do it. Gradual. This is Kaizen approach. This is one of my favorite ways to do things, is little by little. Many things you can change just with lots of little small steps. Sometimes you have to totally quit, like the alcoholics. They can't do it little by little. Most of them just have to totally quit. 100%. But other things, you can just little by little by little. That's how I did my money, my finances, debt, loans. It wasn't one day I was suddenly financially free. No, it was little by little by little. I would live cheap, more cheaply, more cheaply, less expenses, less expenses, get rid of my debt little by little by little, gradually. It may take a little longer before getting used to saying no to loans and unnecessary expenses, but I'm willing to take the risk. Oh, it's not a risk. It's a reward. I know it would create a better change in my lifestyle. The loans are the risk. The debt is the risk. This is the freedom. I promise you. What are you risking? Saving more money? (laughs) That's not a risk. (laughs) Having more money? Saving more money? (laughs) Having money and then investing it? Having extra money? That's not a risk. That's a reward. That's a benefit. Myat with a very dharmic comment. All living things in the world are getting tired because they want, they need, they desire. Craving. This is called craving. Greed. Freedom and peace is at the end of those desires. Yeah, right. It's becoming the master. For most of us... These desires, they control us. We're the slaves. Remember, I used the Buddhist uh, story of the horse and the rider, right? The rider is your spirit. And the horse is your desires, your wild, crazy mind, your desires and your fears. Well, most of us, the horse is riding on top of us. The horse is in control, stepping on us and controlling us and pulling us everywhere. And we suffer. We want the spirit, our highest intelligence, our rational mind, our logical mind, our spiritual mind. We want it on top of the desires on the horse, controlling it with wisdom. Then we find that peace and happiness and freedom. 
Tata with a very nice way to say this. We are under soft power. This is another, that's right. Um, there's kind of like hard power, you might say, hard power, hard control. That's where they shoot you, right? That's where they, uh, violence to control you, hard power. Of course that is, of course that happens. We all, we all know that happens, but it's less common. Most of us do not experience that every day, right? Most of us, the police are not hitting us every day. They're not shooting at us. No, it's this soft power, mind control power, emotional control. That's how they control billions of people. It's similar to the effect of a boiling frog. Yes, good analogy. We allow to do with us ourselves. That's right. We let it happen. Our generation is becoming weaker mentally. Yes, and of course, there. this is not an accident. We use technical progress for entertaining instead of learning and developing. Right. This is something else we will see in Brave New World. All this technology, using it for distraction, for entertainment, for physical pleasure, for emotional pleasure, not for wisdom, not for learning, right? Not for these other things so much, but really more of just entertainment, distraction. In Brave New World, you'll see distraction and pleasure is used a lot to control people. Okay, Merv with a good comment. Okay, this is a good point, Merv says. I think every... People, every person should give themselves time on a regular basis, meaning, you know, regularly, to think, to decide, and to plan. Perceptions of truth are relative. It's easier for our brain to adjust to our environment than to stay against it. Yeah, right. So we become kind of blind. We don't see our environment. We don't see all this stuff because it's there every day, all the time, for a long time. We don't see these control. We don't see all of this. So um, what she's saying is that each of us need to take some quiet time to just get away from all of that and really think about your life. Really uh, think about these ideas and notice. Think and notice. Think and observe and see. It's kind of meditation, really. Rafikal talking about political corruption. Corruption is strongly influenced by low salaries of public administration employees. It's one thing. Who are therefore trying to improve their position by receiving bribes. Yes, the socioeconomic situation of government officials affects the phenomenon of corruption. Yes, indeed. But I'm using the word corruption. You're talking about the... Well, this is really political corruption, using that word. And it, you are correct. But... I'm talking about the more bigger general meaning of corruption. And the more general meaning of corruption is to is that something good and beautiful and true is changed to something ugly and false and evil. That's what corruption means, the most general meaning of it. Lord of the Rings is a perfect story. I mean, th this is one of the big ideas of Lord of the Rings. The ring, right? That ring. That little ring. Why is it so powerful and so evil? What does the ring do to people? It corrupts them, right? It doesn't make them explode. It doesn't kill them. What does the ring do? Why is everybody afraid to use the ring in that movie, in those books? Because it corrupts. Remember Gandalf? Gandalf, the super powerful good wizard. I mean, he's like, a, he's a, he's like a, an angel almost. Gandalf. He, Gandalf will not take the ring. He says, I cannot use it. Why? He's afraid it will corrupt him. That he is so powerful, he's afraid if he uses the ring, it will change him slowly to become evil. And then he would be super 
powerful and evil, and he would hurt everybody. He knows the ring is the power of corruption. So he says, no, I won't take it. This happens in, the, in Lord of the Rings. This happens many, well, several times in the story. People have a chance to take the ring, powerful people, to take it and use it for, their own, for themselves, to fight against Sauron, to win. And they say no. Why? Because they know the ring is the power of corruption. That's what the ring represents in this story. Corruption. The, the elf prince, the queen, elf queen Galadriel, same thing. She's super powerful. She says no. Why? She says the same problem. If I take that ring, if I say yes to corruption, I will eventually become evil. I know it. So I say no. Even Frodo, by the end, right? Gollum is corrupted, totally corrupted by the ring. He becomes this monster, this evil, disgusting, ugly creature. Because he has that ring, corruption. He's corrupted completely. And even by the end, Frodo is fighting it, fighting it, fighting it. The whole story, Frodo, Frodo's fighting against it. But even at the end, Frodo cannot throw it in the, in the uh, fire. Because it's so, th this idea, corruption, is it takes something good and it, with constantly uh, trying to change it to something evil and ugly and bad. Right? This is what Marxism does. This is what the, uh, we call SJWs do. This is what the media does, is they're always trying to corrupt, to take something innocent and beautiful and good and make it into something disgusting and ugly and evil. That's why, you know, that's why they attack marriage. They want to make and try to make marriage and to, to destroy marriage and destroy families and make it into something ugly and disgusting and sexual and horrible. That's why they're always pushing this stuff and promoting it all the time. The transgender stuff of, you know, uh, a six-year-old boy, let's make, put him in a dress and give him chemicals and tell him he's a girl. What is that? It's corruption. Corruption of the innocent. Pure evil. Pure evil. All right, I'll take one more, and then it's time to go. I'll just read this one from Vitaly, just because it's really nice, and then I'll do a more, more of a question. AJ, Vitaly says, I've been listening to your podcast for 15 years. Wow, from the very beginning. You're awesome, best teacher. Hi from the Ukraine. Hi from Ukraine, sorry, not the Ukraine. Ukraine. And you changed my life so much. I was a simple teacher of English. Now I'm the best in my city. You changed my life so much. AJ, you are the best. Fantastic. You, Vitaly, thank you so much. Appreciate that. And, you know, congratulations to you too. Keep teaching and having a great time. And Tata, I'll give this because Tata gives us, uh, we'll finish with Tata's advice because this is perfect advice. Tata again says, watch what people do. Watch what people do. I was just reading, I'm reading right now uh, Confucius, the, uh, the old uh, Chinese philosopher. Confucius. In English we say Confucius. I don't know Chinese pronunciation. <laughs> um, <coughs> right, probably Confucius and Lao Tzu, the two probably most famous Chinese philosophers. And uh, Confucius, I just read this today. He gave the same exact advice <laughs> 2,500 years ago. Same advice. Watch what people do, not what they talk, not what they say. This way you will recognize good and bad people. Yes, the corruptors, the evil, the mind controllers are... Masters of lying, masters of words. Uh, Owen Benjamin calls them wizards, you know, like uh, Gandalf and like magic guys. He calls them wizards. I call them word wizards, right? They, they can use words 
so well to trick you, to deceive you, to lie, to tell you pretty lies and persuasion. They're masters of words. So you have to always look behind the words and watch what they actually do. Of course, with every politician, this is the same. Every politician, they always say good things. Freedom! Freedom! Uh, uh. Yeah, right. <laughs> But of course, when you watch what they do, freedom, peace, love, uh, every single one of them has the same thing. They all say that. None of them say, we're going to make you a slave and have war and I'm lying to you and we're going to have a lot of taxes and take all your money. They don't, none of them say that, but they all do it, right? So you have to watch what they do. Always watch what they do. Totally ignore what those... When you know someone's a liar, don't listen to their words. Watch what they do. But even when anybody, observe and watch, observe and watch. And this is old advice. Confucius gave exactly the same advice. He was talking about one of his own students saying, well, he's a really good talker, but when you look, he doesn't do anything. He's actually kind of lazy. He doesn't really do anything. Right? And then Confucius says, always watch actions. So that's also very good advice. All right, I've got to go take care of a baby. Lots of love to you. Support Effortless English. Support this podcast. But most importantly, speak English fluently and powerfully and confidently. Think in English. Speak English effortlessly. Train with my VIP program or any of my other courses at EffortlessEnglishClub.com, especially commit, commit, commit. Look up that word commit, C-O-M-M-I-T, commit. To commit is a verb, commit. It's a strong, powerful, good word. It's a virtue. Commit to my VIP program today at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Go there now, commit, don't quit. To my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com, EffortlessEnglishClub.com.